When Pydantic AI came out a couple months ago, it only supported open AI models. Anthropic support is now here. You can now build agents using Pydantic AI and Claude Sonnet 3.5, uh, which is pretty awesome. Uh, we're gonna build an agent that can do research on topics for us. We're gonna write that out to file, then we're gonna create a dashboard with Streamlit to uh, read that data. Uh, and you know what you're going to see here is some some stuff that feels like absolute magic. And then at the end, you're going to see we try to do like literally like the simplest thing possible. And it just falls flat on its face. And I think that that dichotomy uh, with LLMs is just absolutely fascinating. I hope you enjoy. Uh, please leave in the comments if you got any uh, suggestions on how we can improve this or uh, videos you'd like to see next. Uh, first, we're just going to do the Hello World with Pydantic. Their docs are great, by the way. And so this is the hello world, and I am going to replace this with Claude 3.5 Sonnet latest. I've already pip installed, and I have set my Anthropic API key as an environment variable. So we run that, and yes, we get hello world. This feels like one of the most efficient ways to interact with an LLM uh, with code that I've come across so far. Uh, to define the agent, we just give it a model, and we give it a system prompt, and then we use agent.runsync. That sync stands for synchronous. Uh, and we pass in the user message here, and then we get a result, and we print out that result. Uh, I want to change a couple things. I want to set up like a little loop here. All right, let's run this. Do we have a chat bot now? My name is Greg. Nice to meet you, Greg. What is my name? Does it have memory? Your name is Greg. Great. So it does have memory, so that's fantastic. What do we got here? 12 lines of code, and we have a functioning chat bot that still just blows my mind. I basically am just thinking of agents as LLMs with function calling right now. Maybe that is a bit reductive, but for right now, I'm trying to just avoid buying into the hype too much. When people say agents, I'm basically just thinking LLM that can call some tools. And one of the problems with tool calling has just been that it's been so verbose. Basically, the way I think about this is you have to tell it why to use it and then tell it how to use it. If you got multiple tools, this gets pretty long and there's a lot of punctuation in here and it's just inelegant. So what I really love about... Pydantic is it just really simplifies that tool definition. Here's uh, an easy example. A thing that most LLMs can't do is tell you the current time. I would say write a function to tell the current time. So I have my function here that defines the time, but just simply having agent tool plane equips this agent with this function. So now if I restart my agent, I say, what time is it? It can actually run that function, and you can trust me on this, that it is actually the current time. Whereas if I do not have that function and that tool, and I rerun this, I don't, it can't tell you the current time. So this is really cool to me, right? So we define the function, and now instead of having to write all of this, we replace all of this definition with this single line and Pydantic AI basically turns the name of the function and the doc string into this dictionary and passes that along to the model. And that's pretty elegant. This means now that any function that you write with a single line, you can equip your agent with that tool. Now let's try doing something that's a little bit more complex than just telling the time. So you may or may not notice this YouTube channel does not have a ton of videos. I'm fairly new to this, so I'm trying to learn how folks are doing it. YouTube has a data API. We can search for content. There's a Python library for this, which I have installed. And I'm going to ask Cursor to write a function that searches the... YouTube data API for a query. And that's a lot of code. I cannot stress this enough. I have not read this documentation. I actually have no idea like what the actual implementation would look like if I did this on my own. This this looks plausible. Cursor did already just guess that I was wanted to equip the agent with this tool, which I was correct about that. And let's change a system prompt. That's probably fine for now. Let's run that again, do some research for this video, and boom, it works. So look at that. That's pretty cool. I'm skeptical about agents, but chatting with an API 
that I've never written implementation for. And there's so much interesting stuff happening here. When I'm using cursor, I'm using Claude Sonnet 3.5, and then I'm using Claude Sonnet 3.5 here as well. But so I basically use Claude to write the code to interact with the API and then equipped Claude with that code. And now I'm able to chat with the API. That's pretty awesome. Let's see, what else can we do here? A function to retrieve the thumbnail. Don't know if that's gonna work or not, but maybe it will. Write a function, retrieve the details of a given YouTube video. And, okay, so get video details. So once again, we have equipped the agent with these tools. And once again, I have no idea what this code is doing. Let's try it again. Search for 10 videos on Pydantic AI. All right, we got five. I asked for 10. Here's a summary of the most relevant, so I probably got more. Okay, retrieve all the details you can for the one with the highest number of views. What do we have? Oh my gosh, look at this. All right, so Pydantic, the new agent builder on the block. Pydantic AI, channel, stats. Oh my gosh, look at that. You get the description. It gets a little bit of a summary. Can you retrieve the thumbnail for it? It can be accessed at the URL above. Did I miss that URL? Can you please give me that URL again? I'm skeptical, but let's see what happens. Wow, look at that. That's amazing. All right. Jeez, look at that. Okay. Okay, that's pretty cool. So here's the next thing I want to do. Function that appends JSON to an arbitrary file. So now our agent has a way to save the data. We'll run this again. Search for Pydantic AI. Pull as many details as you can about each video and write those details to a file. I'm not giving it a file name. I'm not telling it how to do this. It'll be interesting to see if it tries to do this in one swoop or if it figures out that it can append it. There is so much going on here. All right, I've started saving it. The file now contains detailed information about the three most. All right, let's see what that file says. Video, look at this. Holy shit. Okay, let's get 10 more. Do 10 more and watch, we can watch them come in. Wow, that's awesome. That's so cool. Look at that. That's pretty powerful. I wonder what this is costing me. And this context window's gotta be getting really big right now, right? And it looks like it did all 10 and that worked. Okay, let's just try one more thing because JSONL is not like the most user friendly format. I'm going to break away from Pydantic AI for just a second here. And let's do write a streamlit application. And you could see that it had Pydantic videos.jsonl in the context of this request. And you can see that it is opening that file. I'm gonna save that. Let's run this. Oh my gosh, look at that. Whew. Wow. All right, videos by channel, views by likes. All right, so I'm not saying this data is useful, but look, <laughs> we just had it right. An agent, we had it right. There are three different functions to interact with an API that I didn't even read the docs for. Had it right, output JSON L data. It did all that. We wrote the chat bot. It did all that. We never received an error. Now we just built a custom app to view that data. We've not received an error. This is awesome. The thumbnails. I want to change the date to a more readable format and make the title clickable. Man, I can't believe this all works. Let's see what happens. I don't know if I need to restart this or not, but let's see here. Okay. Oh man, we got our first, we got our first error. First error. 
first error fix this error do we have url in the data did we actually say that that would have been an important thing to save don't you think oh we don't have it it's not in the data oh my gosh wow what a whiff error occurs because link column syntax has changed let me fix that for you i have a feeling this change is not gonna work given that we don't have the url and yeah i didn't think so <laughs> it, it can keep changing those field names all at once it's not gonna find the url can you interpolate youtube url if you have the video id for it is interpolate the right word there yes you can all right so here we go let's try that no still does not work all right let's try this again fix this error with what you now know about the url still got the problem I'm gonna to have to start trying here in just a second. All right, last try, and then we're gonna to have to actually get our hands dirty here. Dang it. All right, so we gotta figure out what's going on. Let's just do this, remove the URLs. Let's get this back to a state where it runs, and then we can. All right, so we're back to a state where it runs, so that's great. Can you make the title clickable? Let's see if that works. Oh, we got it again, wow, look at that. Why will it not? do that i just don't think that this is gonna work except save try running this again i think we're gonna get the same error same error and i'm getting frustrated now i still don't think i mean it keeps going back and forth trying to do this link column here so let's just delete that link let's see if we can run this again and then it works just fine it's funny right i think this is it's a good example of Holy shit, like we have uh, a chat bot that can chat with APIs that I've never touched the documentation for a dashboard to like, look at the data and it did all of that without errors. And then when we got to the part where we just tried to make title into a link, couldn't do that. <laughs> Perhaps this is what is so maddening at times about these LLMs and like why it's, I think, hard to buy into so much of the hype about agents like on the one hand it's amazing and on the other hand it's comically incompetent and I, I don't know how to bridge the gap between those two things and i feel like if with an agent if it's incompetent 10 percent of the time but you have a multi-step process your reliability is just plummets it to the point where it's not usable and, and i haven't figured out how to fix that yet so, uh, leave in the comments if you want to tell me how i can make a link in a data frame and streamlit uh clickable please do that if you got any uh thoughts on where we could take this next or any other videos you'd like to see uh please let me know thank you so much